In the last couple of videos, you saw us complete the mechanical assembly of our steering system. So now we can steer our boat. We just needed to carve the tiller down a little bit. The giant schlong in our cockpit was overbearing and way too heavy. Robbie decided that he would indeed sculpt it into a serpent. With the rough shape ready for sculpting, we painted and installed the nuts and bolts. Sculling the boat. Maximum control that can be done at the back. With all these projects, I had a little extra epoxy. Ravi asked me to epoxy the little cracks. There's a couple of cracks in this wood. It wasn't perfect. So now I'm just going to sand that off. We want a plain wood finish and then we're going to oil it up. I looked at many different reference photos to combine several different species of snakes. That's probably why you're not going to see anything super realistic or anatomically correct. We bought a cheap Dremel bit kit and began the wood carving. I didn't have the tools to take apart uh, my gearbox and I was not going to spend hundreds of dollars buying the tools that I needed to take it apart but finally we did go and take the gearbox apart and uh, basically we discovered that there was some significant wear on one of the cones of the gearbox which was causing slippage so I had some tooling done on the, on the, rim, on the cone which is not exactly the best thing for the gearbox but at this point if it gets us anywhere it's better than it not being good for it. I had the surface of the cone roughed up so it kind of bites better onto the, the clutch material, the, the conical section of the clutch material. But now we have to see if it disengages at all. Uh, we might be stuck We might forward. be stuck with the forward. Okay. It might not even come out of the forward gear. They might be putting it back okay. together now and it might be constantly engaged on the forward gear. Okay. Which I guess is, I've done that before with the little two horsepower uh, Honda outboard. Those tend to only be in forward Yeah, well, one, gear. Thing is, one thing is starting an engine on a tiny outboard on forward gear. The other is to have your diesel engine constantly running yeah. on forward gear. So this should be interesting. Yeah. We had also considered using an outboard. We were trying for a couple of weeks to get a hold of something, anything in between 8 horsepower and 20 horsepower. Whatever we could get uh, in that price range. And there, there, what, there weren't outboards here that we could buy used for, yeah. for a price range that was acceptable to us. We did buy, of course, before we came to Progresso, an outboard um, bracket. bracket for any sort of horsepower engine up to 
25, yeah. Yeah, 25 horsepower, something that could hold that weight on the back of the boat. So we're still considering that we could put it, drop a little outboard on the back of the boat. At least that would get us in and out of harbors, give us a little bit of confidence because we've had some boat struggles around us. Uh, the harbor that we came out of before that we made a big deal of having to leave after several years. Yeah. A lot of boats have ended up on the rocks just in recent months. And but course, all those boats had the engines working. So I don't know. Yeah, and that's, kind of... with, and that's with engines working. We don't even have proper sails for this vessel. It would be too much of a dangerous uh, gamble to try and leave here without some sort of auxiliary propulsion. Now, manana, 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 manana. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to go there and it's going to go manana. One hour later, as I usually do, our morning ritual is I headed to the mechanic and the metal shop. I saw so my, my gearbox still completely disassembled. And what happened is the actual housing that holds the whole thing together has stripped bolts. And he said that someone had already tried fixing it. Looks like there's some pretty old helo coils on it or something. And they're going to need several more days now to fix it. They're going to have to find a bit and the time to re-drill the holes. They're going to move them from 8 mil bolts. They're going to drill them out to 10 mil bolts. Anyways, yeah. The... Our saga continues. Time to reinstall the windlass. Going to have to make the holes for the bolts and also the hole for the chain to come through. I could not see very well where the holes in the deck used to be pretty much, so I had to carefully determine where the pilot hole would be placed. Next step was to trace out and to cut the hole larger with a hole saw. I had to make a couple of pilot holes to really place it precisely. The placement of the chain locker bulkhead didn't allow for much wiggle room. I would also be cutting out two backing plates with some of our remaining G10 board. <music> Lastly, I marked the holes for the bolts. I also cut out a fairly large hole for the electrical wires to pass through. From the inside, you can see that there was just enough room to bolt the windlass down with that pesky bulkhead in the way. I epoxied up the holes through the deck, and in hindsight, some cloth inside the holes would have been best. But now everything was sealed up, and it was time to bolt the windlass down. It's been another whole week since we thought we were gonna get our engine part back. Finally got it back on the boat. You've got oil, spray, a chain lift maybe. Yeah, I forgot to get another piece of chain. I think it's better to put the gasket on so that if it's working, then we have the engine as is and working. If it's not working, it means that 
We just take the engine off and f***ing sell it. The engine would have to be lifted out again, of course, because there's not enough room to maneuver the gearbox back into place without doing so. It's cleaning the, the area to try and make a, a fairly decent seal. Do you believe? Do I believe what? Do you believe in this? Nope. No, I believe that the engine's gonna stay in either one gear or the other, which is not good. Which I don't know if our engine will be able to start in gear. We won't have enough power to start in gear. Maybe with a fluid starter. What happened today is that we finally got our gearbox back from the mechanic, and which was so so. We put it back on, we put everything back on, the water pump, the gearbox, the belt, we had to kind of realign the engine again and tightened everything, tightened down. everything down, put the exhaust back on and we had to start the bloody thing which had an air leak somewhere. Yeah, so the injectors are in these little things, yes, right? Yes, those are the injectors. It took us like an hour to get rid of the air leak, but we finally got rid of the air leak and the engine is running. It seems that it's not slipping as much or on forward gear. The reverse is slipping still a little bit. When the, when the cones are slipping in the gearbox, it generates heat instead of thrust. So It kind of just accelerates so fast that it, it's, it's harming itself. Yes, it's harming itself. It's cooking okay. itself basically. Okay. To friction. And if you keep it long enough, it will actually weld itself. We ran the engine a little bit and it seemed to be solid. Solidly running in forward. Really hard to go into neutral. Yeah. And of course we don't have the accelerator shifter in the cockpit. It, it's kind of weird because when they put it back together, they, mu they must have played with the, with, the, with the distances between things. I don't know how, maybe they, they put a washer somewhere where they weren't supposed to, or they took out a washer. A distance was changed. Basically, there's a little metal piece that's kind of like a little W, and when you put a neutral, the pin clips in and holds the neutral in place. Mm. And right now, it's basically not doing that. It's slipping from forward to reverse. Yeah, it's hard to it, find the it, neutral. It, it's hard to find neutral, and I think it's gonna get better with with the use. When it gets a little worn out, it might find its its spot again. Okay. Hopefully, if not, we'll have to just run the engine on forward gear most of the time. And it would be one thing if. You know, you could use your accelerator in the cockpit next yeah. to your steering and you could be like, forward, reverse, yeah. forward, reverse. Kind of try and look for that neutral in the middle, but no, we, we have to physically have one person downstairs, downstairs in the in the but, engine bay. But that, that was always the case, even before we had the gearbox working, because for some reason this gearbox requires, too I would, much, say, I would say about yeah. 25 to 30 pounds of pull and push to put into, into gear. And that didn't help when you took it apart either. It's yeah. still really hard. It's, it's, it's actually smoother than before. Okay. It, yeah, especially the forward gear kind of enters smoother than before. But uh, there is no uh, wire, throttle wire and and, and uh, gear wire that's strong yeah. enough to push. It would have to be a ma literally a manual bar that, that you kind of- We could have one six foot bar that comes up through the Yeah, hot rod door. style. And we shift that gear from forward to neutral to reverse. We get a big bar and try to do that. 
That's oh, I just, oh, I just have my trusted mate here with a little bell. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ring the bell. Ring the bell and just in. One oh. ring for neutral, one, two rings for forward, and three rings for reverse. The engine's also leaking a lot of fuel from various places. The rocker pump is, uh, so is leaking, have to, so I have to still take the rocker pump apart. And still have to do a little bit of leaking fuel work. There's a little bit of a, wa a water leak in the exhaust. I'm going to go at that with some JB Weld. We still need to check the rigging. Just do a rigging check, pre-departure rigging check. To finish the running backs, well, just attach the pulleys to the running back. Uh, there's a broken block. There's, there's a broken block. I think we're going to work on the floorboard as you enter in and out of the boat because I can foresee that's going to be a problem if I'm running in and out trying to change shift gears <laughs> for our engine. I see that as a, as a, a bit of a safety issue. So if we get all that done, we'll try to attach the accelerator, at least the accelerator lever. Yes, yeah, so we're going to try Maybe not the gear lever, but the accelerator. Whew, almost there. Progress was beautiful and all, but you know... Being too long in one place, that's just crazy. And yeah, I want to go fishing again. It's good for the mind and the soul.